I'd like to Sol call. Bee? Is that a solo bee out in the pond? That is a solo bee. <laughs> Swan in the foreground. You can barely see it. I can't, yeah, I can't make that. I'm, I'm calling the October 26th meeting of the Mashpee Conservation Commission to order. Uh, before we go further, is there anyone in the audience tonight who has something not on the agenda that they would like to discuss the commission, with the commission? Mm -hmm. If not, Drew. Okay. Yeah, um, first is two sets of meeting minutes to approve. Um, first set of meeting minutes is September 28, 2017. Move for approval of the minutes of September 28th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, second set of minutes is from October 12th, 2017. Have we seen those through? I have. You have. Been reviewed and did anyone not receive them? If not, we can. I, I, I review them when I get them. Remember specifically which date, so okay. and it's not here, so that's why I'm it's not asking. in the package. Oh, it's not in the package. It's not in the pack. Um, did anyone recall receiving them and reviewing them? Right. Why don't we table those for November 9th? Then apologize. No, nope, no problem. Bad memory. <clears throat> okay, time for uh, yes, a couple of updates. I think so, um, <clears throat> just a quick update on some upcoming. AmeriCorps projects uh, that Caitlin is uh, currently scheduling. One of them will be for over at the San Chua Pond Preserve. Uh, for those who are familiar with the area around the fish ladder, um, if you're crossing over the fish ladder, the trail goes up a hill and then traverses over to uh, a large abandoned bog on the other side. Uh, that hillside is, uh, as you know, experiencing quite a bit of erosion. It's not easy to get up that area. Um, so. Uh, it is an area of archaeological sensitivity with the tribe that was identified during the construction of the fish ladder, uh, but we did uh, run this project by the tribe and they, they have no issue with it, uh, which is to install uh, steps or water bars uh, all the way up that gouged out section of hillside, which has just gotten worse from ATVers, motocross uh, riders going up and down that hillside. So. Uh, AmeriCorps will be going in to install uh, steps, we'll provide all the materials, they'll provide all the labor, and hopefully we can um, uh, take care of that runoff and, and erosion uh, scoured out area of that hillside uh, to make it more passable and to, and to prevent further runoff. Um, the other project that AmeriCorps is working on is going to help us to <coughs> clear an old access road that um, leads up to the John Spawn Fish Ladder. Um, there's, uh, there's two sets of roads. One uh, goes from the gate before the parking lot up to the fish ladder. Um, there's two sets of gates, one right, up, right before you hit the parking lot at John's Pond, and then the Air Force owns a gate that uh, leads down a dirt road uh, to the fish ladder. That dirt road, there's a left uh, that you can take called uh, Bog House Road, um, which is severely overgrown, and we can't get vehicles down there anymore, so AmeriCorps is going to help to clear that out, widen it a little bit, and then uh, we're seeking um, the assistance of, the, uh, of Justin Fleming from Sea Run Brook Trout Coalition to fix some ATV damage that has occurred on a stretch of river just downstream from the fish ladder. I, sorry, I meant to have a photograph of it, but uh, I will provide it at the next meeting. Um, this is an area where it's a very shallow area of the river. Uh, ATVs have crossed over this section of river multiple times, and as a result, it's expanded the banks have just gotten flattened uh, so the river is significantly wider at this part which results in shallower water and it's a difficult area for fish uh, to pass through so we're enlisting the consulting help of Justin Fleming to uh, reestablish the river bank uh, on either side using uh, woody uh, debris that's just that, to kind of area was just a trail ford for a long time, right? But well, it was never a trail. I mean, it was it's off a trail on both sides, and then uh, ATVers started riding through the river, um, <laughs> which separates. Uh, there was a thought at one a long time ago to put a, a walking bridge there, um, but the river is so wide at that point. It really it's becoming during periods of low flow, especially it's difficult for for a fish passage to get through that area. So. 
by beefing up the banks with, with woody debris, and there's plenty of downed trees uh, that we can use uh, that came down in uh, past storms that have already been cut up by DPW uh, that are right in that area that we can use to fortify the banks. <coughs> Justin knows exactly how to place them and um, how to construct them in such a way where it can result in deeper scouring of the riverbed and narrowing of the riverbed so that it can get a little deeper in that particular area. And, um, and then we may look to have the assistance of DPW to install some sort of um, anti-ATV uh, structure to prevent them from crossing over that in the future. Uh, I but you're only thinking of a natural scouring by, you know, building the banks back up again, let the nature take Let nature take its, yeah, let, let the flow uh, kind of scour out over time. A lot of sand built up in that area. And um, with the thicker logs that we're going to use, that will hopefully will have some vegetation take root uh, and kind of beef up the bank in that area. And um, but I would like to see some other measures just to deter ATVs from after we after we do all this work from crossing over it again. Uh, so we'll ha we'll have to take a look at that and see what uh, what kind of solution we can come up with. So. Okay. So we're going to call the hearing of Eric P. Rothenberg and Pamela Eli, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, at 18 Spoon Drift Circle. This is the proposed installation of an outdoor shower, landscape, and hardscape improvements. It's an NOI. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Is that on? No. Mm -hmm. Should be. Is it? Yes. You don't hear the... Okay. Yeah, but it's on. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members and staff. Uh, for the record, uh, Bob Gray, uh, professional and scientist with Sebastian Inc. Asset Mass. And I'm representing the uh, property owner and applicant tonight, Eric Rothenberg. And uh, we have with us uh, also our professional uh, landscaper if you have specific questions on methodology. Uh, this is an 18 spoon drift. It's an existing uh, developed lot with a, an existing single family home. Uh, I think it might be helpful if um, you look in the notice of intent. I have a series of pictures. Um, <coughs> give you a little bit of orientation before I go over some of the proposed work. Um, the first picture is this one here, which uh, just gives you a shot of the house. Uh, off of the circle, 18 spoon drift. And uh, my truck is the white uh, Toyota. It's parked in what is going to be referred to as the main driveway. And to the right of the mailbox, you'll have uh, or see another driveway, and that's the guest uh, driveway. We're proposing some work in both of those areas. Um, the next uh, picture is a close up of the guest driveway. Uh, so I'll be addressing uh, these uh, row of stones uh, that you see here with the two American flags. And the uh, next picture is around the right side of the house as you're facing the house from the uh, circle. And you'll see a, a series of timber, um, timber uh, Timbers that are used for a walkway and they have deteriorated, so we'll be mentioning something about those. Coming around to the north side uh, of the house uh, as it faces uh, Spoondrift um, Cove, you'll see that we have uh, a shed in the picture and uh, we have an area that we are identifying as a proposed uh, patio and fire pit. And also in that same general area at the north, uh, we are proposing a sod lawn. And coming back around to the um, west of the house, uh, as you face it from the street, we are proposing between the shed and the house in the main driveway uh, some additional sod. So going back uh, to the notice of intent with some specifics here, I have in my narrative on page two uh, the proposed work. And I'll start with the um, lawn at the north portion of the property. 
Uh, presently, there is uh, basically no lawn in that section, and it is proposed uh, to uh, grub out the uh, material that's um, unsuitable material, and uh, the landscape professional will then uh, install some loam. We're calling for about 65 cubic yards. That area will be hand raked. Uh, we're showing in the uh, plan that's before you a uh, steel edging at the far north of the proposed sod, and that's to uh, design to uh, keep uh, the flow on the grass and also to prevent uh, the roots from the buffer zone plantings from intruding into the lawn area. Uh, moving uh, clockwise uh, to the side of the house, uh, we are proposing to remove those uh, rotted wood steps and we're not proposing to put any steps back. We're proposing to uh, regrade that and uh, it will simply uh, function as a, as a walkway without any stairs or steps. Um, if you look um, to the uh, left of the stairs uh, on the right side of the house, there is also a notation for an outdoor shower. Uh, I have uh, talked to the um, building people and they didn't seem to have any problems with that. Um, neither did the health department, so we did do our due diligence there. Um, coming uh, down to the guest driveway, when the stones are removed that I showed you in the picture, with the two American flags, we are proposing a cobblestone um, uh, area to outline the driveway on that side. So we'll be installing those cobblestones just on the north side of the guest driveway. Um, between the main driveway and the house, uh, there's a small area that we would also like to propose the sod and that would ex extend up in the area between the shed and the house. And it will also be around the proposed um, uh, fire pit. On the main driveway, just at the circle, at Spoon Drift um, Circle, we're proposing a cobblestone apron. This will essentially uh, be similar. If you went to the site, it'd be similar to the, to the apron that's at the house to the left of the uh, driveway. And we're also proposing the cobblestone along both sides of the driveway and the entrance uh, to the uh, house. The uh, driveway itself, on the main driveway, it's going to be machine graded and um, we're going to be removing uh, some of the unsuitable uh, material, uh, stones, etc. <coughs> Um, base will then be contacted and uh, prepped and they're going to spread uh, the reclaimed base material and compact it and then put down two inches of uh, three quarter inch uh, native crushed white stone uh, in that main driveway. The last um, basic item uh, for construction would be the patio. Um, this is going to be a circular patio. It's going to be 15 feet in diameter. It center to be a fire pit. Um, this is going to be um, out of blocks uh, or pavers uh, with stone grout. And the very last item, uh, which we don't show on the plan as a uh, distinct uh, item, I don't have the details, but the landscaper may be able to explain this. We are petitioning you to install the subsurface irrigation system to keep uh, the sodded lawn uh, watered. At this point, I would entertain any questions. Um, and if they are work-related that I don't have the answer to, uh, as I said, we have to be the landscape professional. Do you have any comments, Drew? Um, just a couple. You, you said you spoke to the Board of Health about the uh, the shower. Did they mention anything about the necessity of plumbing it into the existing septic if it's they an enclosed did, uh, shower? They mentioned that 
the need a permit uh, for the plumbing. Right. And uh, they said when you when the applicant applies for that plumbing permit, the, it will indicate that you have to hook it up to the existing. Because it has an enclosure, I'm assuming that's probably why. I think. Yeah, I don't have the details on that. Size yeah, I think that's what they, they, that's their kind of threshold. If it's open without any sort of enclosure, they don't require plumbing into the existing septic. But if it's enclosed, uh, three or four sides, they require that because mm -hmm. it could be used for shampoo, shampoo, soap, and things yep. like that. They don't want that going into the groundwater. So, okay. <clears throat> I just didn't have Board of Health comments, unfortunately, uh, with uh, in time for tonight's meeting. Um, my other question was um, the grass. Um, we do have uh, lawn standards under the bylaw. Um, I didn't see any indication of what type of sod it's going to be, but 90% uh, rye fescue mix is, is the requirement uh, with no more than 10% bluegrass uh, mixed in. Um, so given that standard, is, is an irrigation system really necessary because these are these are the types of lawns that are adapted to this type of environment. Um, there's also a nitrogen control bylaw in town. Generally speaking, because I didn't see what the, on the plan, the setback of the steel edging um, and limit, I'm assuming that's also the limit of grass. Uh, yeah. Uh, under the bylaw, it does, this is uh, under regulation 32, which deals with nitrogen, 31 rather, excuse me, nitrogen loading and lawn standards is that um, and I'm taking this right out of the regulation, it should be noted that a newer expanding lawns are generally not permitted unless the nitrate load from the lot or any areas under jurisdiction under Chapter 172 can be shown to be below five parts per million. Um, a naturally vegetated buffer strip, a minimum of 50 foot wide as per the provisions of Section 7 under Chapter 172 is maintained and established between the water or an end lawn and all of the provisions uh, of the uh, lawn standards are met, which includes that rye fescue uh, mixture. So here, because it doesn't really show, the plan doesn't show the setback of lawn from, from the edge of wetland. I'm assuming it's inside 50 feet. It is, it's 20 feet. Yeah, okay. The, the steel edging. The steel edging is 20 feet. Right. So it's a recommendation in, under the regulation. It does not a hard and fast rule. Um, my own personal opinion is that I think that uh, as long as the, the lawn standards are followed, um, and that includes annual reports, uh, if an irrigation system is going in place to have to be submitted to the commission, we need documentation that the sod is of that mixture of, uh, of rye fescue um, from the supplier before the installation happens. That has to be submitted to the CONCOM office. That would be a condition in the permit. Um, and the last, uh, observation is that you are proposing patio and fireplace also within 50 feet that triggers mitigation we have a mitigation calculation chart if specifically set up for pre-disturbed areas like this mm -hmm. uh, where there is some mix of native vegetation and that the the trees that are within the 50 foot uh, setback but you're proposing structure patio and fire pits are considered structure under the chapter 172 bylaw they may not be under the building code but they are under the wetlands yeah. protection act so that triggers mitigation but I don't see any proposed here so I'm assuming it's been 50 feet I just don't see any setbacks uh, on the plan so those are my comments I'm going to let uh, Mike address the uh, composition of the sod because okay. it's not in my uh, sort of expertise sure and uh, he can address uh, whether an irrigation system is that uh, uh, Mike Zarlin Clipper Landscape Mashpee um, yeah it's a 95 percent plus fescue mix from uh, I think right now it's coming from Sod Co. Okay. Okay. So we would just, if the commission approves this, um, yeah, the they would need everything. documentation of yep. that. Yep. Um, I don't see anybody talking about trees that I see in the last picture of the of the application, where it, to me it looks like you got a couple of pitch pines mm -hmm. next to the shed. Are they healthy? I went there, but I. Yeah, oh, I don't know. I mean, the, this property recently went through vista pruning permit. Okay. Um, I don't know if every tree was looked at, but, uh, you know, there was, um, 
a previous permit for vista pruning, so some of those trees, you know, were pruned as a result. I think they went through one year of vista pruning already. Uh, I personally didn't observe anything that looked like uh, any tree was, uh, you know, in danger, but um, I mean, it can certainly be looked at. But yeah. I think whatever's left is pretty healthy. Yeah, it's, it seemed that way. Yeah. So um, you're not planning on removing any trees or substantial no. vegetation in this lawn area? The only thing coming out is in the, in where the turf areas are proposed. So right now it's all mulch, and it's pretty much just running away from the house towards, towards the water. So we saw it as, so you know, why we didn't want the, to The only it. thing coming out is mulch? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. It's yes. just years of mulching. Over you can see the... the uh, these photos of one on the bottom right kind of shows the area where looking out towards the wetland uh, and towards the creek um, it is mostly just layers and layers of mulch over the years um, and, uh, and there is some scant underbrush uh, on the right side of the bottom right photo um, but some of that has been pruned from the vista pruning as well so I guess my question is now that you've clarified that the composition of the sod is a permanent irrigation really necessary in my experience, I've never gotten sod to live without irrigation, so. Permanent or temporary? I mean, is temporary a possibility? Um, it is a possibility. It's just not as controllable as a permanent. Yeah. A permanent irrigation system, you can control how much water you're putting down on it. So right. I'd feel a little more confident that we would know what was getting watered and be able to design it rather than temporary sprinkler heads, which they all shoot 40 feet. So where is the well going to be then? I don't see a well called for here, and you're a talking what? about well? you, a well for the irrigation system. You're talking about this is town water. Town water doesn't support. If you, if you want to speak, irrigation. you got to get up to the microphone and give your name for the record, sir. Uh, Eric Rothenberg, the owner. Uh, there's an abandoned uh, um, uh, sprinkler uh, um, back valve on the property that I was just going to have them tie into. Um, somebody cut it off at, uh, as it was going into the ground and left it there, and I was just going to. Liven it back That's up. An interesting situation. <laughs> I mean, the, the concern I have is that <clears throat> if the commission decides to allow a lawn within 50 feet of, of the wetland edge, which the regulation generally dissuades unless there's a 50 foot wide naturally vegetated buffer strip, which this property doesn't have, um, you could argue that portion of it is naturally vegetated, but I don't think it's a it's a whole 50 foot wide robust buffer um, to the water's edge. You're proposing that lawn that close with permanent irrigation. Um, even though you'd have to comply with the lawn standards, it just seems like you know the town's taking a lot of steps to reduce nitrogen loading. Uh, part of this is to reduce the need for high maintenance lawns, um, irrigation systems that send nutrients running off into the groundwater and directly into the creeks. Uh, and so that's that's the kind of thing that we're looking to avoid. Um, the other alternative is to um, and I guess this could coincide with the steel edging or even replace steel edging, uh, is to construct a berm around the edge of the lawn um, to prevent any sort of runoff of nutrients uh, into the creek as a result of lawn care. That's easy to do. Yeah. That's no big deal. Yeah. 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 I don't have a problem with that. I mean, the 20 foot buffer is the actual reality buffer between right. the years and years of mulch. Yep. That's why it was chosen. And sure. it's, it just falls within, if you walk around, it's, it's 20 feet everywhere pretty right. much. Uh, um, as your photos show and my photos show, uh, Drew, this, there's not a lot of um, undergrowth vegetation mm -hmm. in, within the treed area in right. that buffer. Right. Uh, so perhaps as, as mitigation, since it's an existing lot and we don't have 50 foot of natural vegetation, perhaps the landscaper can submit uh, a, an enhancement plan for some buffer zone uh, plantings, and um, that you know that could be woody plants, mm -hmm. um, which would probably be uh, the best uh, right. idea in that area. Sure. I don't think herbaceous stuff um, would, would be right. appropriate, mm -hmm. but uh, there's plenty of um, on your approved list, plenty of sure. um, uh, low growth shrubs that wouldn't interfere with the vista that you had referred to. That for, uh, the last, owner last owner, I think, applied for, for yeah. Um, yep. But at the same time, might uh, accomplish what the commission.
transmission is trying to do is sure. trying to get some of the nitrogen to right. uptake it before it gets into the waterway. Yeah, this is, doesn't sure doesn't look like a great place to put in a bunch of new sod under the guidelines that we that we generally follow. Mm. Um, I mean, under the under the law standards, it does you like know it stipulate six done. inches of of loam uh, you know as a minimum when you're establishing new lawn areas. Um, I think just my own recommendation is that if there's a berm installed along the edge of the lawn areas um, in addition to mitigation uh, then I think that would alleviate the concerns that I that I have as far as runoff and berm it up inside the steel edging and then the steel edging hold the berm in place. Mm. something to I'm sure you can figure out a way to combine the two I know the steel edging is to prevent you know the woody vegetation from creeping into the lawn right. area so but perhaps a uh, you know a berm on on the uh, on the landward side of it, or something, just to uh, prevent any kind of that runoff uh, into the creek. So, in the paperwork we have now, we don't have a discussion of the lawn standard those requirements. I guess. Right. It's not expected that they put it into the um, show it on the plan. I mean, it's an automatic condition whenever there's so lawn. Have it in the I, I would anyway. put it in as a condition of the permit. Yeah. Um, and what about the mitigation for the patio? That's up to you. They did offer up mitigation, um, and we do have a chart that goes by every five feet of structure uh, within that 50-foot setback. There's a there's a calculation that you run based on riparian or non-riparian settings uh, that gives you a square footage of mitigation uh, that is required. So you can use that chart to figure out just the exact square footage based on the square footage of the proposed fire pit and patio area. Uh, and that can give you, you know, a, a space or square footage of plantings to be uh, to be put in. Um, so there is a, a methodology for figuring that out. Yes. There's additional mitigation, though, that would be triggered for having um, this type of lawn within the 50 foot. Uh, there isn't anything under the lawn standards under that regulation that requires mitigation. It's only structure okay. uh, under the regs that I can see that, that triggers mitigation. If they want to supplement that because of the concerns with runoff, I'm perfectly fine with that. Um, I think it would be a good idea. I mean, I don't know exactly what sort of square footage we're going to get from the, from the patio area. It's not that big. Uh, it's uh, it's yeah. higher square, so it's 15 <laughs> feet across. So yeah. Seven yeah. And a half. Times 3.14, about 225. Yeah, yeah. And it goes by every the, the calculation chart goes by a five foot setback increments from 50 feet. The closer you get to that zero mark, the higher the, the calculation numbers run. Yeah. So, starting at the 50 to 45, 45 to 40, so on and so forth, it gets more and more and more. Where that's why I, you know, the plan doesn't show what that setback is to the patio. It, it didn't, doesn't show up on the screen, but it's on the plan. It's uh, the shed, the bottom of the shed is, is literally at the 50 foot mark, because I remember okay. when I was here before making sure that that new shed was outside the 50 foot. Right. And uh, so it looks, it's probably around six, eight feet inside the 50. Okay. Or, uh, and obviously 15 feet across. So okay. We can certainly, and we're open to moving that to get it further back from the water if, uh, if that's an issue. I don't think it's an issue. I mean, it's going over a, a pre-disturbed area. We're not proposing to remove any native vegetation to install it. No. Um, so I don't. I mean, I don't think there's a problem with the I, proposed I location. My only comment about the plantings is the plantings might add some dimension to that land, which is pretty bleak right now when you take a look at it. it it's, it's an understory with that. nothing in the understory. Yeah. So therefore, a few pro appropriately chosen plantings as an mm -hmm. offset might actually bring attractions to that area as you look out to that water. Yeah. Keep them low so that they're not going to block your view. We don't want you to cut them down later. So, you know, do something like that, you know, some berry bushy kinds of things that would add a little color in the spring, I mean, fall. I think it might be interesting. Mm -hmm. It would be good to fill in those barren areas towards yeah. the water's edge. There's some, there's mm -hmm. That's what I would. Barren areas. This, this yep. mulch doesn't attract a whole lot of vegetation, but you can fix that with a few plantings. Do we need to show the berm on the plan? Yep. I think it would be good to show the berm on the plan um, so you could submit a revised plan showing the, the plantings and, and the berm. Um, if the commission wants to have them work with, with our office to do that, 
Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, you guys are hoping to go ahead with this this fall, are you? <laughs> this work? Or? Yeah, I want the most likely that the side survives. <laughs> and I thought I'd be here earlier, but yeah. I tried to go into RDA. Right. So it took a little longer to get here. We would have just barely squeezed it in the fall. Right. I'm not sure. So I so I suspect there's no there's no good reason not to just go ahead and, and wait for that that revised plan to come in and uh, but I don't don't know that the commission needs to. No. Talk yeah, to I them think again. we can vote uh, with can, the conditions that are we can appropriate. Approve it with so. the understanding that yeah. we'll actually have the plan in hand. That's what I would. There's a mitigation right. spelled out and so forth. Yep. Andrew, did we say in the end that the irrigation? All things considered, with mm -hmm. all the other efforts that are being done by the owner to to mitigate mm -hmm. that the irrigation is okay. Yeah, as long as those conditions are yeah are met with the berm and right. the mitigation, then yeah, I, that would be my recommendation. Yeah, it's, we'll have to uh, rely really <coughs> in, in practice on the owner's sense of responsibility about you know being a good shepherd to his property. Mm -hmm. You hold out on trying to have a perfect golf course style lawn, all the water and, and nutrients that are required for that. Right. Well, that you know, that's uh, uh, that's not something we have direct Less maintenance control overall over. But that is a requirement, of course. <laughs> you really do need to hold back on on the kind of uh, application of nutrients and so forth according to the town standards. Right. Right. I have a question. Uh, yes. Uh, if we're going to um, Alter the plan to show the berm. Mm -hmm. Do we have standing permission now from the email you received from Pete McEntee? Who oh, yeah, I think that, okay. yeah, to, to mm -hmm. alter All the plan, right. yeah. I want to know if I had to reach back out. To no, I think, I think he understands that, you know, it would include future alteration if necessary. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. yeah. And the mitigation planting will be on any plan revision that's made and submitted? Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. So you, just so you have it. You'll show the mitigation. You can use the chart. It's it's under our waiver of requirements section, which is posted online. Just that part of that regulation is is on our website, um, and then showing the berm. Uh, in addition, I don't think there were no. I didn't have any other issues with nope. other things that were proposed here. They're mostly cosmetic improvements. Um, it was really just the lawn and the patio and fire pit that I had That's questions on. So, <coughs> excuse me. Does anyone in the audience have any comments or questions? I believe we're ready for a motion. I move that we close an issue in regards to this application uh, with the understanding that, that the conditions that we have discussed to be applied to uh, all the paper. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you so much. Aye. Calling the 603 hearing, Templar Holdings, LLC, 9 Tulip Shell Way. This is the proposed dock modifications and addition of a boat lift. This was continued from 1012 to address Harbor Master and Shellfish Constable concerns at the request of the applicant. It's an NOI. We would, it is uh, uh, requested to be continued once again. Um, I, I, I move that we uh, continue this hearing to November 9th at 6.03 p.m. <clears throat> All in favor? <clears throat> Aye. 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 It's approved. Calling the six, oh, yeah. Opening the 6.06 hearing for Martha J. Cantor at 6 Cantor Lane. This is for proposed kitchen addition, new deck, and landing construction, and a porch enclosure. It's an RDA. Good evening. For the record, my name is Jack. I'm just calling the civil engineer and trash practice. Jack, if you could use uh, the mic microphone, you can take it off the stand. Yeah. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, again, for the record, my name is Jack Landers Calling. I'm a civil engineer in private practice, and my office is located in North Falmouth. Um, I was retained by Mrs. Cantor um, to make the proposed, well, 
to prepare the plan that's before you this evening. To give you a little background information, I worked on this property about 18 years ago for her father. Um, I also worked for her brother. And now she has uh, acquired the property in her own name, and she uh, would like to make some improvements. If you read the RDA, it, it sounds like a lot. There are four steps, really. Um, there's the construction or proposed construction of four foot by 10 foot landing. The enclosure directly below the second floor bedroom. If you were to look at this property, it's a little out of the ordinary. Um, yeah, there you can see it, perfect example on the lower left corner. What we want to do is fill in directly below that footprint of the second floor and then um, and fill it in with the kitchen and then as a transition both into the house and out of the house have some stairs and a continuation of this deck so they can have that ability to circumnavigate around the, the house in a, in a more fluid manner. Um, as a part of doing this project, we did an updated on the ground instrument survey. We de depicted all the trees, four inches DBH or larger. Um, we showed the top of the bank, the bottom of the bank, the salt marsh, and Wankoit Bay. Uh, we think it's an improvable project because um, we're greater than uh, 70 feet away with any proposed activity and you'll have to forgive me I should have dimensioned this in here I didn't but this is 58.9 feet to here so it diverges it's it's in excess of 70 feet we think it's an approvable project we think it's has minimal impact and hopefully you concur with us and approve it if you have any questions I'd be happy to answer them Group? Did, uh, again, I apologize. We, we just didn't get Board of Health comments. Did they have any stipulations on this with the with the increase in living space, with the increase with the kitchen, Board of Health? Uh, no increase in number of bedrooms, so they right. wouldn't have a comment. I mean, okay. I had a personal conversation. That That's is, what I was if, wondering if you had, if, yeah. If that addition is on top of the septic system, right. show us an improvement, but it isn't. Yeah. There's okay. actually a basin over here, and then... Um, I think this is the historic location of the former leaching pit. Right. Okay. Where's the property line in this property? Is it Cantor Lane uh, becomes the property line? <laughs> this line? Yeah, I, Cantor Lane? I don't quite get it. Um, I wasn't part <laughs> of that history, but if you start <laughs> at this point, you're going in a southeasterly direction, That's then easy. you follow the concept know. point northeasterly, and then it's serpentine. <laughs> And it goes around like this and off. It used to be straight through. And I'm not, I think, and again, this is before my time, I think there might have been a structure or structures that necessitated shifting the road around. I think it's that structure right there. Um, I believe this was an estate, had multiple dwellings. Mm. As you probably know, zoning goes back, um, well, in the town of Falmouth, it would be 1929. I'm not sure what it is in the town of Mashpee, but at what time you permitted multiple dwellings on a lot. And I suspected it predated it, and so what they wanted to do was subdivide it out, and there was a ruling by probably the planning board that you had to create an access, so they made it serpentine like that. Yes. Ancillary to this, we do have to go before, I think it is the ZBA, to get relief um, because we are 12.1 feet from the road layout and the building commissioner ruled that since this doesn't comply with zoning, um, he wants us to go before the ZBA to get uh, a reading by the, um, the ZBA as to whether or not it's an increase in nonconformity. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it's, it, it's pretty clean. Yep. Okay. Motion for, or do we have any other before we discuss them for a motion? Um, we got the audience. I'm ready for a motion, quite yet. Um, 
Do you have any comments to make on this? Video? No other comments. Um, I, I was just curious about Board of Health. Um, as it was already stated, this is all outside the uh, the 50 foot zone. You can see the uh, lower right just gives a shot of where the right kind of standing in front of where the proposed additional deck is, looking out towards Bacoya Bay. Um, there's no removal of any native vegetation for any of the uh, improvements uh, proposed under the application. So um, my recommendation is for a negative determination. So there is there is an increase in the footprint of the structure, but we aren't concerned past 50 feet? It will be a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio of... Uh, of mitigation, uh, you can require it, but it's it will be minimal. Does anyone in the audience have any comments or questions about this? This application is from Martha Cantor, and <coughs> Jason and Mark Four is from so that's probably the thing that comes from. Interesting, but not worth it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a very small addition to this. Yeah, it's pre existing. The entire condition. area is completely disturbed. I mean, yeah. Nothing there at all. Um, I, mean, I mean, if I was the owner, I'd probably want a few plants out there somewhere, but I don't think it's really that important to the commission to be worried about that small amount of area right. on that lot as it's in. Anybody else have any things to say, views on that? Okay. I would move for a negative determination in regards to the application of Martha Cantor, 6 Cantor Lane. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So negative Thank determination is approved. Have a good evening. Thank you. Opening the 609 hearing for Patrick M. and Sharon M. O'Connor, 66 Massasoit Avenue. This is a proposed addition of a deck to an existing dwelling. This was continued from 1012 at the request of the applicant. It's an RDA. Yes, I'm Patrick. Good evening. Just describe for us what you're going to do. Uh, basically, um, well, you see that garage, it's a three season room, for which we're going to build a deck 16 by the length of the uh, three season room by 25. It's kind of a non conforming lot, going over. Uh, not much you can do with that area. You mow it, and almost falling down as they mow it every time. I'm just trying to <laughs> build a deck where I don't have to. So the, uh, just to kind of explain the resource area situation with this setback, the property setback, this, uh, if you look at the right photo here, um, this uh, sloping front yard facing out towards the pond doesn't take on a four to one slope until it gets down to uh, the lower half of the hillside. And then it's interrupted by a greater than t uh, eight foot wide break in slope before you hit John's Pond on the other side of the road. The reason I point that out is because this could be construed as Inland Bank by its uh, slope criterion of four to one, uh, halfway, about three quarters of the way down the bank. But because of this break in slope right here, the Inland Bank actually doesn't start until the other side of the road. Therefore, the setback is from the Inland Bank over here, not on the hillside here. Um, the setback from Inland Bank here is, I know it's not shown uh, the plan just shows the uh, footprint of the deck but it is outside of 50 feet um, and considering you've got a road break uh, in between here this is inland bank straight transition to what we call bordering land subject to flooding or beachfront associated this is thin strip of sandy beach here uh, and then you hit uh, land under water bodies and waterways associated with john's pond so um, the deck is um, not going to adversely affect any sort of uh, stability of slope um, 
nor any anything associated with water quality. So that's why we deemed it as a uh, as an RDA because it's in the outer outer portion of the buffer zone, set back to the inland bank on the other side of the road here. Um, Board of Health does have some comments. Excuse me, just one moment. The property is located in a zone two. Um, please inform the applicant that the proposed deck cannot be constructed over the septic tank unless an access port is created. So you want to talk to the Board of Health before you get started on just to make sure you're yeah just if you haven't talked to them they're probably aware of that but it'd be good just practice just to run it by them just in case so no other comments this is a private road that uh, <sighs> do, um, I think yeah it's a drive is private I believe yeah it's kind of that's the road that fronts the property is a drive <coughs> the property is address is Massasoit which comes down and connects with uh, Sakonet. Okay. Massasoit okay. is over here to the right. It comes this down. This gentleman owns both the hill as well as the other side of the roadway? Uh, no. That's I town land, I think, isn't it, on the other side? Well, no, it's not. It's it's <coughs> private. Well, it's state-owned land, basically. Okay. It's a great, John's Pond is a great pond, so. It's, but I think, I know Sakonet Drive is not owned by the town, so that means it's the abutters owned to the halfway mark, so you've got private ownership on one side and state-owned land on the other. Okay. Or it may have been. I don't know if that land on the other side of the road was part of the old Labute family layout. Labute family owned all of this land way back when, and then it was all subdivided into individual lots. I don't know if the beachfront belonged to the Labute family or not. That's really not, you know. Doesn't matter. Not here. really. No, it doesn't matter that much. But <coughs> okay. So, are there any comments from anyone in the audience? No. Motion for negative determination. Second. Second. <coughs> all, all in favor? Aye. 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 It's passed. Negative determination. Well, that's good. That's a good Which thing. is a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> all set. Thank you. Opening the 612, Nicholas <coughs> Dostilio, I hope, at 95 Timberlane Drive. This is a proposed Eagle Scout project to reestablish the kayak landing and do the associated landscaping and hardscape improvements. So uh, just to... I believe that's on so Santuit Pond. Santuit Pond, yeah. Just to refresh the commissioners on this, this was uh, something that was came up at the last meeting. It was supposed to be before you at the last meeting, uh, but there was a screw up with the advertising in the paper. You did authorize um, the applicant to go forward with the work with the understanding he would come back before you now that we've had proper advertising to um, to go over the permit requests um, we, for the work that... uh did uh, hear quite a bit about it, as I recall. Yeah. A couple so of you want to give ago. us a update on what took place? and. Um. Well, can you just give your name for the oh, record? Sorry. sorry. Uh, my name is Nicholas DeSolio. Uh, I'm coming from uh, Troop 36 Mashpee. Um, so as like, a quick recap, yeah, I am basically, you know, reestablishing a, like, kayak area, which is, um, I'm, like, doing a, like, a phase two of a previous Eagle Scout project. Yep. Um, so far... Nothing has, you know, been worked on. I'm still trying to get everything, you know, ready. But I do have a, uh, I think, yeah, I do have a few dates on when this is going to be taking place. Okay. And they will be, uh, I believe, November 10th, 11th, and 12th. Okay. Uh, and that is, I believe, Veterans Day weekend because... Mm -hmm. No school. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. What I would does the commission have any any questions about what the specifics of the project were? Because I know it's it wasn't it was presented at the last meeting. But if you have any questions for him, um, what I would suggest is that you you know correspond with Caitlin uh, regarding the work days. Um, we send us something you know that's. Uh, if there's any change, are there any changes uh, from what was originally proposed? Or still looking at the same project, uh, all, same, all the same. All the same. Okay. I am, yeah, not you know, 
going over the 25 by 25. Yeah. And I'm like making sure that everything I do is like uh, eco-friendly, basically. Sure, sure. And so I don't, you know, kind of pollute the pond more than it is. Sure, sure. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, just correspond with Caitlin, send her those dates. Um, uh, cause we'll probably want to have either myself or her down there for one of those days just to, you know, check on things and make sure everything's going okay. So yeah. invite Caitlin down. Maybe she can help out. <laughs> sure. She'd be all too willing. To <laughs> These on your drawing, you, you have landings. This is, this is a storage locations or, um, what does this mean? Landing? Uh, the landings are basically just, uh, timbers I'll be installing into the side of the hill. Means the hill down to the area is rather dangerous because it's a bit steep. And I will have um, a contractor helping me mm -hmm. with the proper way to install them. Oh, so but what are they? Is this steps or? Uh, they're just like, just wooden timbers. Yep, timbers. Yeah, not, not really. Or she treated for a pathway, though. I mean, it's for a pathway, yeah. or okay. so it's more safe. So, you know, people don't fall oh. while they're carrying right. their yep. boats yep. down to the pond. Yep. Sounds great. Yeah, it's great. I have one question about the uh, the fill that's going to be brought in and the use of the fiber fab fabric. Uh, the filter fabric. Filter fabric. Is that true? I mean, I would just worry that, that placing that uh, fabric underneath mm -hmm. the sand and getting it really to be permanent that way. Mm -hmm. I could easily see this starting to get uncovered and uh, pulling up, you know, not being what you want. Um. I mean, it's something we can we can keep an eye on. I don't I don't really see any issue with uh, with using filter fabric. I mean, what it does is it'll it'll prevent you know um, vegetation from coming up and kind of you know making it a more hazardous. Uh, I mean, it's I think it's pretty commonly used in projects like this. So I I don't yeah. I don't foresee any issue with it. But the usual issue is when you just don't have enough fill on top of it. Right. Right. Well, that's kind of what I was saying. Yeah. So I'm not sure what the... I assume it'll be pegged around the edges or something. You have some... Yeah, I, uh, I am also working with a contractor with that. Okay. And he does have an estimate of how much sand I would need to, you know, make sure that, the, you know, sand is, I, like, co completely covers and, mm -hmm. you know, doesn't make, the, like, the fabric a hazard okay. to the area. Is that contractor going to be on site with you guys, or is he some... I believe so. Okay. I'm I still have to work that out with him. Okay. Maybe we can have him contact our department as well uh, just to kind of go over the details and make sure that, you know, it's done the right way. Yeah. And yeah. I would like to also state that um, this contractor has done, met, like, lots of these types of projects. Okay. And has, like, experience with this. Good. Excellent. Who would maintain it? DPW maintain it if there's an erosion of sand or anything of that nature? Oh, uh, oh. Uh, sorry, I am uh, planning to put a berm on oh, cool. Good. The, like, the edge of the water to, pre uh, to try to prevent uh, as much as erosion as it can mm -hmm. so you don't get it all into the water. As long as we don't have rain like we've had for the last couple of days. <laughs> It is a, uh, just to answer your question, it is owned by the town as, as open space, so I would imagine any, any sort of maintenance issues, uh, DPW would be the entity that would okay. tackle that. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it will require maybe. maintenance, clearly. Yeah. Little. Hopefully, maybe, maybe you can rally the neighborhood into forming like a, <laughs> you know, uh, a friends group of the area to maintain it, too. I, I think that would be a, a good thing, because I, I know there's been a lot of talk about how this area once used to be a very nice beach actually uh until it just kind of fell by the wayside and nobody really paid much attention to it so yeah. maybe by having these kind of improvements it'll kind of rally the neighborhood into into you know taking an interest in it and maybe even volunteering to maintain a logical neighborhood association involved here? Um, i think there was a neighborhood association that owned the area mm. and that's why it was uh at first the boat landing mm -hmm. but since it's now town property um, right. <coughs> no, like, 
they kind of just yeah well, we'll blame, we'll blame the town yeah yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there's well, the it, friends you know <laughs> knowing these kinds of projects <laughs> from a long time ago the problem that you have is that you attack them with a great enthusiasm and then you move on you go to college you go to the service you go on to do whatever you're going to do with your life <laughs> No one's there to hear it because you've moved on. So it's like you got to have someone to kind of pick up the pieces. It sounds like the town will pick up the pieces because it's their property. Well, yeah. I, uh, I feel like once this is back up again, I think more people will start using it again. That's what I, that's yeah. what I think. Yeah, I it, so. It'll spark yeah, more yeah. interest. And in, yeah. When I yeah. actually originally yeah. went to the area, I actually, there was someone already there using it as, the, as a landing. So yeah. Yeah. it's obviously still in use. Good. Yeah. I just want to make it, you know, like safer. Sure. For the people. Yeah. That's a good project, definitely. Absolutely. This is uh, RDA. Okay. Motion for negative determination. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes. Thanks a lot. Good luck. Thank you. Sure. We're now opening the 615 hearing for Peter J. Merlino et al. Trustees at 18 Quaker Run Road. This is a proposed amendment to an order of conditions 43-2478 to allow for dock modifications. Good evening, Jim Merlino, 18 Quaker Run Road. And yes, we're trying to uh, change the uh, amended order of conditions to spin my float 90 degrees and we uh, put a new float, a new code, encapsulated plastic floats, and we're going to change the ramp to an aluminum ramp. And nothing changed, we'll keep the 116, and we're going to take the existing pilings and just reposition them to the new float position. D did we see this before, or is this something very similar? <laughs> it sounds very familiar. No. Well, I mean, there there was an order of conditions for uh, lengthening the pier, or fixed yes. pier. Yes. So, yeah. That sorry. Just, uh, that was just a lengthening. You weren't going to rotate the float. Correct. Now, right. they're, now, now they're, they're rotate the rotating the float. The float, 90 degrees, put it in the aluminum ramp. Right. Right. It's a wooden ramp right now, is it? Wooden yeah. Ramp. Okay. So this does increase your depth a little bit. Right. Yeah. She, this area, Shoestring Bay, is it's notoriously shallow. shallow. Uh, so, and I just did... Uh, Unfortunately, we didn't get their comments in writing in time for the meeting, but uh, both Rick York, the um, Director of Natural Resources, uh, and uh, Alec um, Harbormaster submitted uh, that they're fine with this project. There's no, okay. There is no land-containing shellfish out here. It's all thick muck, uh, not suitable for land-containing shellfish. And there's no issue with the reorientation of the float uh, from a navigational standpoint from the Harbormaster or from the neighboring docks. And it's nice to see the upgrade with the encapsulation on the bottom of the float uh, to meet the new standards under the under the dock and pier regulations. So I'm not quite seeing the rotation. Of the drawing. That's the actual the original drawing. Mm. Sure the new drawing the there are two drawings. Oh, as I They're showing its spot. Sorry, I don't think I include that yeah, on the slide, but there should be. Same as showing. Showing. Right. Yeah. Yes. yeah. That's the rotation. Yeah. yeah. Rotated how? Oh, I see here. Yeah, yeah. So instead of a T, it's going yeah. straight out. So this this is the new. The darker line is yeah. the new. This is the current, the existing right here. So it's. Being I know it's a shallow place. area, and you're trying to get out into the water, but uh, I see relatively close by are two moorings, and you've got some pretty shallow depths, one foot, two foot. Is this? I mean, we could keep going, and maybe you'd find five feet. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look like it. <laughs> um, and, and where there's one neighbor's float down here on the on the bottom, that's not being changed. No, that's just showing the setback uh, setback from his dock to his and neighbor's. What about the property to the? To the north. Be as far out as you are. Um, a little bit shallower than me. You might have it on the uh, image. Yeah, you can see. He's uh, so 
So that's, uh, you can barely see it in the image, but that's his dock right there. So he's a lot shallower than, uh, than this is the, the applicant property okay. right here. So he's, yeah. Right and, and, so. and the har harbor master is okay with this from a navigation standpoint? <laughs> he is, <laughs> yep, yes. Okay. Yep. Hmm. Well, well, it's certainly overall the project is uh, making a substantial improvement in the situation. You are getting more depth, and it's great to see that load encapsulated. Yeah. I don't see where there's really much material change in this in that's being suggested here. It's no, I mean, there's some <coughs> alteration of the pile configuration. That's about it as far as from an impact standpoint. And then encapsulating the float is, is certainly better, a better situation. And then the uh, aluminum ramp swapping out from wooden is, is innocuous. So. Yep. Are there any questions from the audience? Propose an approval of the uh, amendment to the open order of conditions for Peter Molino et al. trustees at 18 Quaker Run Road. Second. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Opening the 618 hearing, John J. Pike and Els J. Pike Smith at 39 Wilson's Grove, proposed septic system upgrade. It's an RDA. Thank you for your director. My name is Tom Bunker with DSS Design. Uh, here's the land. Uh, uh, Wilson's Grove, uh, Papanessa section, Nantucket Sound. This, uh, as you can see, this property fronts right on the beach. Uh, there's a, uh, a timber retaining wall along here, and an old, uh, one of the old old cottage houses, two bedrooms in this location, uh, with a cesspool, uh, failed cesspool in the back, right behind the, uh, the house. And uh, so this project uh, is to upgrade septic systems, what we've got is a septic tank and a leaching field. It's a, still a two-bedroom system. There's no expansion of the number of bedrooms. Um, the point out here is uh, the entire lot, almost the entire lot is in the velocity flood zone. Uh, eight feet above the ground. Uh, we have this septic upgrade here. We're uh, 83 feet down to the high water line of uh, Nantucket Sound. There are some uh, low, some uh, variances, health variances, to the uh, property lines. We, we reduced the setback to the property line here to move it uh, further away from the uh, the. Uh, the beach, the ocean, and uh, so we're going to uh, Board of Health next week, I believe. Uh, and I talked to Drew, or rather, sorry, Glenn today, and he said he has, uh, he feels this system uh, from, from a health perspective doesn't require anything else and it probably will be approved this way. It's, uh, it's what we're doing. <laughs> How long has that timber uh, wall or bulkhead been been there? I don't know. It looks like a, a long time. It's I don't, I don't know either. But it, it's, it's an interesting observation. Yeah. <laughs> 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 long. Time. I don't think it's anything recent. Uh, I went down and looked at it too. That was the first question I had. Is like I wonder how long this has been here. But uh, yeah, it's um, an interesting looking retaining wall. Mm -hmm. um, Access to to the digging is going to be around the front yard, or I'm assuming. Or? Down here. Okay. Yeah. In, in the, into yep. the backyard there. Yep. Um, coming around the corner, and the septic system is going in this location. Here. Okay. Um, I don't know where the uh, you know where the um, the material is going to be stored, but it should be away from the bank, just in case there's uh, 
And this is a. It will be. What do you think the turnover time is for this project? One day, or is it just? Uh, what do you anticipate? Yeah, one to, two One to two days. One to two days, so, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a quick job. It's done okay. with a plastic infiltrator, and this will see him backfill. Okay. I mean, some of that will have to be brought out. Or there's some, uh, if you look at the, pro, the, the, the soil profile, it's probably an you know, overburden of, uh, well, actually just a, about three feet of fill and then some medium sand below it. Uh, okay. Some will have to be scraped off to get to the good stuff to lower, right. taken away, and then clean the sand and loam brought back. So I'm not sure that much would be stockpiled. Really. Okay. All right. Yeah, I was just curious. And the shed is just to be determined whether it's going to be removed or relocated somewhere uh, uh, on the property. Uh, on this plan, I can tell you we, we will be coming back with a plan to replace the house. Oh, okay. Uh, for now, the shed is staying, but it, right. you know, the site plan is done mm -hmm. for that. It's sure. Going. Okay. Does this plan show the um, property line on the rear of the property or the, the right side as I'm standing on Wilson's Grove, the right side? Oh, yeah, it kind of goes right down, right behind the house. Right oh, side, okay, right that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, huh? that's it. Yeah. I was. A foot? And yet you got a cesspool. <laughs> wow. Oh, okay, that's the cesspool for the other house. Okay, yeah. then that one. Okay. Yeah, these right. lots are real, real tight on wow. Wilson's Grove wow. there. Yeah. Yeah. Back back in the day, they they pushed it away from the water as best they could, I guess. Right. right. <laughs> without without trespassing. Yeah. I can tell you, in 1955, my parents rented the house behind this house, <laughs> and whenever it rained, you didn't want to flush the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> so I think this is a great improvement, <laughs> unless something changed from. The <laughs> <laughs> it was the old good old days. Yeah. Sure, lucky this is. Well. Let's get it out of here. I would move for a negative determination in regards to the application of John and Alice Pikes, 39 Wilson's Road. Second. Uh, assuming there's no one in the audience who has a question about this. Sorry. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Thank you. Tag team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so opening the 621 Harry Jeffrey L. Shames, 19 Bowsprit <clears throat> Point. It's proposed reconstruction of a bulkhead seawall and ramp float structure within same footprints. This is an NOI. Thank you. Um, Jeff Ryder with BSS Design, representing Jeff Shames. Um, this project, you know, it's called out all here in the, in the, for the side of the plan. It's a rebuild of the bulkhead from wooden, which is kind of pre-assorted wood, um, 24 feet of that, and we're going to change that over to a vinyl sheet pile. Excuse me for interrupting, but could you just go back one slide? Oh, yeah, sure. So I'm trying to figure. This is uh, the end of waterway. Um, so isn't the the, uh, the house that was on the first hearing tonight? On the first hearing? Rothenberg. Oh no, that's uh, that's spoon drift. That's. Uh, this is on the point there, look, looking over at the marina. Yeah, yeah right opposite down. the marina. Oh, at the yeah. marina. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. You stand at the going across the. The bridge to Papanesset, you look back. You're looking back, yeah. Yeah. See the house yep. at the point. This is the left of that point house. Yep. Right. All set? Yes, thank you. Okay. Very good. Um, so this project is to basically reconstruct in the exact same footprint. Uh, the again taking away the wood wall. Um, it's horizontal pieces which is tending now to uh, lean, and it's rotting. And um, so we want to replace that with, you can kind of see it's bulging there right at that little ramp. Um, unfortunately, the, uh, the, the house was shut, shut down kind of early this year, and the float's been put away. 
So there's no uh, ramp and float to look at in these photos. But when we did the survey, you'd see these uh, spot grades around the float showing the water depths at mean low water. So there's plenty of water out uh, in the on the boat side of the ramp. The ramp is actually uh, two pieces. It's six by 32 overall, but each one is six by 16. And so uh, those are to be rebuilt, by the way, and put back in the same place. Um, I'm assuming, hopefully I'm assuming correctly, that Drew would uh, craft up a a condition on the float material. Mm -hmm. um, there's typically you, you like uh, the encapsulated uh, flotation. So they're getting rid of the existing floats, or are they just going to retro yeah, retrofit the them? The floats are going to be thrown away. Scrapped, right now they're yeah. uh, styrofoam. Okay. Yeah. And uh, they've been taken away and scrapped now. Okay. Yeah. Going to keep the aluminum ring. Right. Right. Okay. Um, and that little yeah. sort of landing, or you may call it, um, is going to be reused, but it's going to have to be taken away for the uh, reconstruction of the bulkhead itself. So is again, there's 44 feet. That's including the two returns. Okay. And back into the, uh, the, uh, the upper. So they're not, they're not tackling the remainder of the bulkhead areas at this point. That, that's, I see it, it kind of wraps around the whole uh, property. That well, there's some upper, upper walls. Oh, you're right. That's upper wall. Yeah, it's not. This is just the, the upper uh, walls um, are associated with that back deck, in fact. But, yeah, yeah. Um, this is by itself, again, 44 feet. Yeah. Including two returns, about eight feet apiece. Okay. All work to be done from the water side, I'm assuming, or? Uh, well, I think there would be some work from, you know, that beachy area that you see yeah. in this photograph here. Yeah. But the, uh, the sheet pile driving will certainly be done from a work, you know. Yeah, barge. Marine barge right. Marine float. Yeah. yeah. How high is that bulkhead? It's four feet. Four feet. Going to be back at four feet. Let me explain on the second page. You see, uh, there's a length of four feet right down the center of the bulkhead. It's using the Z style uh, vinyl bulkheading. And uh, it's um, really kind of three. You've seen some other sheet piles out there. This one I call out Shore Guard. There's many of them out there. But this is going to be sort of a beige color. And it's going to be capped with uh, whale beams, they call them whales, and then a wooden cap on top to dress it out. And using this, uh, this type of sheet, it, uh, if you don't go over four feet, you don't need to uh, use tie backs. So in other words, you know, it's more cleaner, mm. drive it in, and it's, it's so stable that it doesn't need to be. Uh, held back the tie back so there's no digging up the slopes and into the yard. Hmm. So these are driven in the same manner that the uh, footings for the dock is taken, done? I mean, they're, they're driven down? I don't understand. How is the no, they're using the existing piles, but it would be the same if, if they were installing new piles, like the driving, yeah, the, okay. the methodology of driving the yeah. structure into the sediment. Well, the piles that are to be replaced, and it's in the notice, Right. They're going to go right back in the same hole. Same hole, yeah. This will be vinyl coated. Oh, good. good. So the, the sh is the sheeting driven? Is that how that's installed? Uh, yes, that's driven as well. So the pilings and the sheet piles will match in color. Yeah, is the wall a, a Chapter 91 license wall? Is it, does it have a yeah, license? Yeah. license. The okay. number is, is uh, on the front page. I see the number says 3948, but that says existing dock license. Yeah, it includes the... Includes the, the, wall. the wall, okay. Yeah.
again, Harbor Master and, and uh, Shellfisher have signed off on this. There's no change in footprint um, from the dock uh, part of this project, so neither one of them have any issue with it. Okay. Nate, I, I didn't see, I don't see a picture of the, like where the returns are. Neither of them. I didn't, yeah, unfortunately I didn't get a, a photograph. But it's, I mean, it's not undercut or anything. It's, no. those are all. Yeah. I mean, there's a bit of fringe salt marsh you can see in the, in the background there on the right. photo to the right. right. <clears throat> so they will have to take some care. I'm assuming, you know, any, any barge that's going to be used, is going to be used at, uh, at high tide. Um, so impact to salt marsh shouldn't be an issue. Um, but well, you know, it'll be a condition in the permit that any any sort of damage to the salt marsh will require mitigation um, if the, if any damage occurs during construction. So we can have that as a condition in the permit. One more thing about uh, section A A. You know, it's cut down to the salt marsh where it shows. Um, we want to be able to, it would have been easier to go outside of the existing bulkhead, but because there is salt marsh there, right. we chose to go on the inside. So you have to dismantle this bulkhead, dig out behind, a lot of handwork, and, um, and then get, get that wall down about halfway and, get, and even use it as a guide for the, the new sheet pile. Okay. I would move for a negative determination or you guys. Oh, it's a uh, notice of intent. Yeah. Oh, right. We'll be close an issue the application of Jeffrey Shames at 19 Bows Point. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Right, thank Motion you. passes. Okay. Opening the 624 hearing for Paul M. and Madeline J. Cruzel, 85 Pompanessa Island Road. This is a proposed removal, reconstruction, and expansion of decks with mitigation plannings. It's an NOI. BSS show tonight. Yep. Close it out. <laughs> Thank you. Cuts down on complaints for the audience too. <laughs> for the only guys here. They might fight themselves. You know. uh, I hope you can uh, accept their recently revised plan. I tell you, the record name is Tom Bunker with BSS Design. This plan was just uh, before Board of Appeals last night. Reduction in the size of the deck. Oh, okay. Take that away. I'll pass these out because the, the plant. I'm assuming the, these just came in now. They didn't get dropped off in the office or anything earlier. So um, the plans you have in front of you, I'm just going to pass these out to look at these instead. Please. Place them with your old plans. Current plans. That's the change, but I'll back back up now. Say that. Would you say that again? Yeah, try me. <coughs> yeah. Well, let me let me just brief introduction here. It's um, 
Okay. You want to use the yellow? Oh, you got? Uh, okay. I went to Staples <laughs> an hour ago. <laughs> um, sure you can works. point two if you want. No, it's, new. it's all you. <laughs> so, uh, 85 uh, Papa Nesson Island Road, we have this ex existing house, and if there are any photos, there has these decks on the back, or this, this deck, this deck, and stairs, and a deck right here. Um, you see there up on the main floor of the house, um, the flood zone comes in into the property like that and uh, making some changes. This is going to become the master bedroom. That's going to be closed up with just windows. This deck is to be removed. Um, this deck will stay. Um, and then if we go back to the plan view, so that deck with the stairs uh, is 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 in here. The deck to be removed is right here. The stairs are here. Um, this deck will be added. It's proposed to be added here. The stairs coming down in this location. The new stairs, and then this deck will be added. And I said that's the deck to be removed. And so. <clears throat> Board of Appeals last night. So I have these lines on here which represent the five foot increments mm -hmm. away from the salt marsh coming through here. And so there's a roughly triangular section right here where the deck is um, getting closer to the salt marsh than the closest corner of the existing deck. And so it's this corner, right, this triangular piece right here which on this plan that I have, uh, orange, outline in orange, that bit of deck, it's 17.4 square feet, is being removed, is no longer being proposed. Okay. On the new plan. And so if you can see. So that, that, that's the only way that, or that's one way the plan is different. The other way is because of this, 17 square feet was removed from the uh, it's the area that's 30 to 35 feet from the marsh. Um, it's in a two and a half multiplier. Mm -hmm. um, so 17, 17 and a half square feet, whatever, removed, and a tiny bit removed from the next zone. The amount of uh, mitigation planting right here and here got reduced by uh, 40 some so it got reduced it was four on the this plan here 425 square feet of mit mitigation proposed and on the new plan that you have in front of you is 369 square feet so that same table in the upper upper left corner um, this is the deck is all in lawn area, any, any expansion is in lawn area. And so you can see right here, um, out in, in front over here. And so uh, there's no habitat being lost. This, these couple of stakes uh, here and over on the other side are the proposed uh, mitigation there's a nice stand, looks for previous mitigation planting here and here of inkberry. And so to uh, keep that simple, they seem to like that, that neighborhood. So we're just proposing more inkberry uh, in, in those locations, 369 square feet. And, uh, that, that is the proposal. Uh, there is an outstanding order which is coming up one after this, mm -hmm. and I didn't know, I wasn't sure of exactly how they, from that plan, how the cedars were oh, uh, right. planted exactly how <coughs> they were proposed. So I don't, I didn't know if there's anything missing from the work on the old order, if anything had to be rolled into this or whatever. But uh, anyway, they're proposing, yeah. this is the proposal to increase the deck and um, do the mitigation planting. Yeah. yeah. That's just another shot of the uh, 
area looking out from the in front of the deck out towards the waters you can see just beyond those ink barriers is where the uh, standing water conditions had a, a vista area right. through these cedars going yep. out that way. Yep. So this, this ink barrier and there are other cedars over this way. Yep. Yeah. So uh, I think the modification of the plan is pretty minor. Um, so I, I don't see it being ruffling any feathers with the neighbors as far as having that five-day requirement for changes. It's a very minor modification in the, uh, it's, in the it's deck size. It's actually a reduction. Of it's a reduction anyway, print, so right? So I don't so. think that should be a concern. Right, right. Um, everything else is pretty straightforward. I, I don't have any other comments on this. Um, I think it's, uh, as was already pointed out, it's, you can see the area is entirely pre-disturbed with existing lawn. Um, it is a notice of intent because of the setback to the bordering vegetated wetland, which is within 50 feet, and it's an increase in structure within that 50 feet, so it does trigger mitigation, and that needs to be conditioned through a notice of intent. Um, so that's why you see that type of filing before you as opposed to an RDA. Um, no other comments? Mark, it's interesting that the, the we're okay with the stairs that are also out further. Yeah. Why is that? Do you know? Uh, Do you know? Or it's actually the zoning uh, egress stairs and landings not wider than four feet uh, do, not, do not come to setbacks and are not. Huh. So they didn't object to the stairs, only that little corner of the deck. So if this had been a, a point of order, if this had come before us, if they had come before us on Monday, say, and then you would have gone to ZBA last night. Have to come back they, would, yeah. they would have rejected this plan. That's why ZBA always says they want projects to go before you that have cross jurisdiction before they do, before they review it. They, they insist on it. So, Makes sense. to avoid that, yeah. If we had done that, we would have to come back to you again. Right, yeah, exactly. 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 Yeah. When, when it really is a setback issue that they have. Yeah. We, didn't, what, we might not have had it. Right. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Overreach. Overreach. <laughs> Editorial comment. Moving yeah. on. Well, it'll be an interesting shape. <laughs> <laughs> um, we ready for a motion? Sure. Motion to close the issue. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Passes. Thank you. You're good Thank to go. You. Take this home. I'll take one more copy of that plan just so I can add it to the file. Um, Dale, you want to pass yours down? All I need is one. I'm taking this home back because you know, this will come up next week in New Seabury if he has not seen this plan. Oh, right, right. So. <laughs> And the other ones, that's uh, that's the last hearing. The other ones are certificates of compliance, which all passed inspection. Um, I did have just a, we'll start passing around the permits to be signed. And I have a couple more announcements. <coughs> Thank you. Well, while we're waiting, have, have you taken a look at the, at the, at the tree fall? Had, the uh, John's Pond uh, herring run? Yes. Yeah. I did I, get a look at that. I didn't look that. at it closely. I guess it's. That's all. Uh, it be moved or is it all? Yeah. That. <coughs> so there was a, a tree that fell. I'm sorry. I, I meant to include a photo of it. A very large tree that fell <coughs> directly into the river on the chant on the downstream side of the John's Pond fish ladder uh, opposite the pond. Fell directly into the stream. And it's pretty pretty sizable tree yeah. um, that was on that eroded embankment. It looked like all the roots were exposed. They have been for quite some time, so it was just a matter of time before this tree uh, fell. Um, but we have AmeriCorps, part of that uh, project that they're coming in for. They're going to dismantle the tree and take it out of the river channel. Um, it's got so much structure in the, in the channel itself that with all the leaf fall that's coming down, the <laughs> ladder right now it'll just catch all those leaves and and uh and result in some significant backup so there'll be americorps volunteers will be taking care of that 
thankfully. Are they going to take all of it out? I mean, it's... I think we can use some of the structure to do the downstream think. work, oh, actually. Work. And, and we could even put some on the side embankment to, yeah, temporarily stop the erosion. Yeah, we'll, we'll make the best of the debris. We won't just throw it aside. Um, so the, It went down perfectly. I mean, it went right down. It went right, <laughs> down, right the down the middle of the stream channel. Down like, the, yeah, yeah. But we've all been watching that for a while, to wondering when it was going to come down. Yeah, yeah, it was just a matter of time. All the roots were completely exposed. So there's a uh, a project that you all approved. <coughs> I think this is a couple of meetings ago. It's 29 Overlook Drive in in the Seabury Papanasset Village. <coughs> Again, this is one of the older homes. It's uh, directly facing out all over the bank, coastal bank, looking out at Papanasset Beach. And, uh, and Vineyard Sound, and um, the abutters within the 10-day appeal period, I, I don't know which the address the abutters, I'm assuming directly behind that home, have appealed to DEP. So as per standard procedure, DEP is scheduled in a superseding on-site. Um, whenever this happens, they invite all the parties that were involved in the permitting process to attend uh, an on-site meeting at the property, including the abutters, the property owners, uh, representative from for the property owners, the, the consultants that were involved in the permitting process, the Conservation Commission, and uh, and someone from uh, DEP. Uh, and the purpose of a superseding on-site is, is generally just to get the take from all sides about why the project was approved, why the abutters are against it, um, what the issues are, and uh, and then the the uh, the officer from DEP goes back and and reviews all of the input. <coughs> And then DEP will issue what's called a superseding order of conditions, which can go one of two ways. It'll either uphold the commissioner's uh, decision to approve the project, which was a teardown rebuild of a single family home, uh, or implement uh, a superseding order of conditions, which uh, may require some additional changes to the project or, or a denial of the project if it didn't meet, if in their opinion, it didn't meet the performance standards. So, but because the order, uh, you know, was submitted, uh, was was issued within the 21 days, it does have standing under the bylaw. Um, so, <coughs> Brad had indicated and Dale that they'll uh, like to attend. Anyone else can attend. Um, and just so you know, it's it's going to be on November 2nd at 10:30 a.m. at 29 Overlook Knoll, and I'll send out another email if anyone else is interested. Uh, so basically, you know, the DEP officer present will we'll just go person by person and just get the take on uh, you know what their opinion is of the uh, of the project <coughs> and from the commissioner's standpoint why you approved it um, and I'd be happy to, to go over the project we have the, obviously the files in our office it was a pretty straightforward uh, application the the rebuild was not getting any closer uh, to the top of the coastal bank. It had all lawn going right up to the top of the bank, and it was a fully vegetated, uh, stable coastal bank. Um, and under the uh, under the appeal, the, the applicant has to base it on the performance standards for coastal banks. So that's what they've stated, that it, the project did not, in their opinion, meet the performance standards for coastal bank and the performance standards for, I believe, coastal beach and land subject to coastal storm flow, which are all the resource areas involved in this particular project. So, um, so they will have to present, uh, I'm sure probably through their consultant, uh, will have to present the the reasoning why they felt that uh, it didn't meet those standards. My own opinion is that you made the right decision. It did meet the performance standards because there was no encroachment closer to the resource area. So it'd be hard pressed to find a, a, a violation of the performance standards in a in a project like that. But um, but they'll they'll hash it all out at the at the meeting. And it's it's good experience for anyone who's never gone to a superseding onsite just to see how it how it goes and what's involved. And because I'm sure there will be more of them. This won't be the only one. It hasn't been the only one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to some on sites in the better brutal uh, middle of winter. It's not pleasant because <laughs> they have to have it at the property. So, um, and then just one last thing: Does anyone have any questions on that? Um, I'll send out so, the date. So like then now, is there automatically also a hearing involved, or is it just? Uh, uh, it will go, like, there is a process, so if uh, if anyone is aggrieved by DEP's decision, let's just say hypothetically they uphold the commission's approval, the abutters still have another avenue of appeal, which goes to what's called an adjudicatory hearing, which I know okay. many of you are familiar with, you sat in on them before, then it goes, it can be appealed to the state appeals court if uh, they're not happy with the adjudicatory process. So there's a couple more 
levels of appeals that they can go through if they have the. We don't know which homeowner is the is the person that is. Raised. I think it, it is stated in the in the appeal notice that I got. I, I just I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm pretty sure it's the ones behind the the, the home that uh, they're appealing it. Um, so, but I'll, I'll I'll send that out in the email too. I'll let you know who's who the abutter is, what the address is. Yeah, the other one I the one I've gone to it seemed pretty productive. Really, it was informally held. But the guy made sure everyone had a chance to talk. Yeah. Yeah, they usually go pretty smoothly. Um, I've never had, I've never been involved in anyone that's been contentious. It's the DEP guys are really good at, you know, just giving everybody their fair share of time to, you know, give their input, and you know, it's uh, it's always been a pretty smooth process. So, um, lastly, I did uh, reach out to the Air Force Civil Engineer Center to try and get an update because we're approaching the end of October, which was the time they had indicated that the funding situation would be settled for. The upper question, it hasn't been settled yet. Um, Rose is going to uh, do her best to get more information. She just didn't have anything new for us uh, for this meeting, but I did ask her for an update. She did indicate that there was still some disagreement as to the, the scope of the project and that uh, they may have to reword uh, some things. AFSI, uh, AFSI, uh, the Air Force Civil Engineer Center may have to reword some things uh, in regards to the proposal for the funding to the Air Force Contracting Center. Um, there's no new news as far as when the funding will be forthcoming. So um, I'll just keep everybody informed. But I just wanted to give you an update on that because they did say the first quarter of fiscal 18, which is coming to a close as of the 30th. So it hasn't happened yet. And I wanted to get some more information on that uh, just to keep everybody in the loop. So a fairly strong impression from some private conversations that, you know, we there's no problem locally. It's just one of those bureaucratic things. It's takes bureaucratic. Time. Yeah, That's it just all. takes time. Yeah, exactly. So hopefully it'll get resolved soon. Yeah. <laughs> and That's it. So do I have a motion or a close? Motion to adjourn. Second.